What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another Jets episode on the Knicks Jets, etc. podcast. And not as always, but with me is my buddy, my co- not my co-host, but my pal, <laughs> and our video producer, Greg Albert, here filling in for the Tratocaster, Alex Terrace. Alex, what, what is it? KFTV Alex. Yep. Oh, oh. <laughs> Got that uh, right. Who is on his honeymoon week. Uh, shout out to him. Um, for uh, he deserves this week off. Oh, uh, absolutely! Again, great wedding. Uh, honestly, it was an absolute blast, except for the part that was in Boston. But <laughs> we'll give it up for Dominic and her family. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, but yeah, what's up, Greg? Uh, you're this is your first time uh, on the Jets episode. You and I have the Winning Picks Weekly yes, uh, gambling sir. episode, uh, which is also hosted by Minute Media. Uh, it's also on YouTube. Uh, what up, man? How you doing? You're also a big Jets fan, and we we we, we three we, we we've been teasing you in here and there uh, on these episodes uh, because you call me crazy and a lunatic for for being an optimistic Jets fan, uh, and so uh, here you are uh, putting your butt to the actual fire now. So what up, man? How you yeah. doing? Thanks, thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be here. Uh, big shout out to Alex. Huge weekend, huge week for him. So happy. He's getting away for a little bit. I know he's going to come back ready to go, uh, especially after that Knicks win last night. So um, we're here to talk about Jets. We had the bye week last week. Um, Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. I'm ready to talk Jets. And just a reminder, you are crazy when it comes to the Jets sometimes. So (laughs) it's not all cap when I say that you're a little crazy. So. We know that, Greg. We know that. I want to know how crazy you're going to get this week. I'm excited for this episode because I'm ready to hear it from the horse's mouth as it comes out. (laughs) Listen, man. We all know I'm crazy. I what? I'm the only idiot you know. I promise you that. That went to London <laughs> to watch his Jets, this, this Jets team. Oof. Uh, I'm, I'm. I don't know if I'm the only guy you know, but I'm sure I'm a handful of guys that you know that went to the Knicks game uh, last night and it was screaming for hours and hours. And hours double overtime doesn't matter. Uh, had the rapid reaction pot up uh, for the Knicks too. So we're we're all all cylinders right now uh, going. So. I can't believe the Knicks are the only are the op, the optimism for us right now. But yeah, I, I, we the Jets actually, Greg, somehow, some way, we joke around that the Jets are somehow going to lose the bye week. But in some magical way, they won the bye week. Every single team in the AFC East lost, besides yeah. the Jets, obviously, because they didn't play, and the Seahawks and the Panthers both lost, which we own their draft picks from. So. <laughs> I mean, I, you, you could you, you couldn't really ask for anything. But the Minnesota lose too. Minnesota lost this week too, right? Oh, uh, I think they might have won. Oh, okay, never mind. Because we, we we got that fourth round pick for Chris Herndon, so I was gonna throw I was gonna throw an extra cherry on he top. Had a t- he had a uh, <laughs> I know for, uh, for there. But hey, man, we have we have these Patriots coming up right down the right down the the pipe. They're the first team. That the this Jets regime is playing for the second time. Yep. But at the same time, it's also the second time that Bill Belichick is seeing a rookie quarterback in a season, and they're pretty. The weeks are pretty close. Nothing has really changed for the Jets uh, schematically, at least. Uh, and they're not that pragmatic to be able to, you know, really wheel and deal with the system. They're trying to just make the first system work. So yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Billy B over there ha- has this offense and defense down pat. Yeah, just just, I mean, just 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 off the bat, yeah, just off the bat, Greg. Like, what what, what are your feel? What are your feelings with the Jets? You know, going into the bye week, obviously it's been it's been a tough first quarter. Um, before we get into you know the specifics of this Patriots game, so yeah, I, I like that. So you know, t- going into the season, it, to me, it all, it all depends. The season is going. How it all depends on how you frame the season going into it. So if you came into the season expecting us to be eight, nine, ten wins, possibly get a wild card and stuff like that, season has not been good. <laughs> You're a lunatic, right? That, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's me. I, I'm, on your scale, that lunatic, that's where I am. Yeah, that's my max. Like ten and a wild card spot was like, of course, that's my miracle. Like, I, of course, that's my Super Bowl season right there. Of course, if if you have low expectations for the team, I feel like we've. We've been competitive in a few games. We've been absolutely smoked in a couple others. I think there's things to build on. I mean, the first week, 
I mean, we talked about it. I just love the fact that we made first half adjustments and we have a team. I mean, like, I think Robert Sala, I think we have a coach in him. I think we have a decent coaching staff. I think now it's about, yes, the, the schemes that they want to run, I think, work at the NFL level. It's not whatever the hell was going on with Adam Gase the last few years. And, <laughs> and you know. Nothing's like that, man. Yeah, people Maybe Matt Nagy a little like bit, talk. but not even that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, when you're watching these teams, I, I don't, at least I don't feel like, like, what are we doing? Like, what, like, I don't have those questions like some, like, Bears fans do or some other teams and stuff like that. My thing now is about player execution and staying healthy. So, I haven't, I wasn't fond of Zach Wilson when we drafted him going into the season. I'm still not fond of him because I do think that there's, I mean, clearly I, I do believe that he's just, like, underthrowing players and he's throwing behind players. If he can get this ball in front of people and start leading people a little bit, I think you're going to see a lot of corrections from him. Better decision-making, obviously, is always key, but when you have a young quarterback, that's going to be an issue no matter who you are. Um, and it, it might take a year or two. It takes some time for these guys. So um, I'm happy with where we're at right now. Obviously, I would love to have some more wins, but you know, going into the season, I, I wanted just to see improvement. We've got a lot of draft picks over the last two years at kind of at key positions. We have more coming up. I want to see how we build this team. Joe Douglas, I've been back and forth on with some of the decisions he's made. So, um, you know, I'm hoping these younger guys pan out. And these older guys that we have, I think at some point we have to start moving on, making some trades, getting rid of some guys because some of these veterans that we've brought in just really haven't been doing anything for us. On the offensive line, some key defensive positions and stuff. So, um, you know, I'm okay with where we're at now. Obviously, I think we need to keep improving. I don't know if we improve or we show a lot this week against Bill Belichick and the Patriots just from 20 years of being a Jets fan. But yeah, we'll they, get into that. Looked, we'll get into that. They've looked yeah. vulnerable too at some spots. So, you know, we'll see. But I want to know what you think about going, you know, where you're, where we're at right now. We had a nice bye week early in the season. We can kind of reset, lick our wounds a little bit, get a little healthier. And, you know, you guys talk in detail week in and week out about, you know, specific players and positions. So I, I'm interested in what you think maybe overall. And then about some key guys to kind of look at going into this middle part of the season that you think we need to, you know, pay attention to. Yeah, well, I mean, Greg, it, it, it's obvious, first of all, that you, you still are a little hesitant on Zach and you're still kind of thinking about your ex-girlfriend, which I get, even though you still don't see all the flaws in your ex for some reason. You still think she's really pretty out there. You're not looking at how terrible Darnold's doing in Carolina, but that's 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 a whole different story that we don't need to get on right yeah. now on the Jets pod. But yeah, so, you know, you, you kind of touched on it. You know, z z the differences between Zach Wilson as a rookie with the Jets and Mag Jones as a rookie with the Patriots. Right. Uh, of course, if the Jets win this week, I mean, the records, <laughs> we're, we're right there. I mean, yeah. we're obviously tied. And if we beat them and then we have the split on the season, that it's it's going to be. It's going to be a, a way different projection, way different narrative. But let's just talk right now as we speak. What do you think about Mac Jones, be, Billy B being conservative with Mac Jones? And so now the narrative is, oh, He's going to be unleashed. We're just waiting for him to be unleashed. It's just like, that's like the quote unquote to a narrative as well, that they've been waiting for him to be on. He just can't make any other throws. So there's that part. So there's that intrigue right now about McCorkle out in Foxborough. And then you have the Zach Wilson right now where we're asking him to do so much literally from day one. Yeah. And you're going to have, you're going to see under throws, you know, because he's yeah. literally making throws that like Aaron Rodgers makes and it looks beautiful. And, you know, even players like Justin Herbert is making a little more consistently and whatnot and other players. And, so, and you're just like, what's going on here? And these are behind. This is low. You know, it, it obviously looks bad to your eye. So one, do you think that's a mistake? And two, like, do you, w what would you rather the Jets approach with Zach Wilson? Yeah, I think, I think, I don't, I don't know if there's a better term for a kind of a game manager, but I feel like the Patriots have been doing that with Mac Jones, and I think rightfully so. I think that they're a competitive team. They got a lot of guys back on defense. You know, the whole team in Foxborough, they haven't been as good as they have been in years past, so that's a little surprising. But if he doesn't throw that, like last week, if you think about it against Dallas, if he doesn't throw that one, like, 75-yard bomb right off the bat, 
the game kind of ends with he threw a pick six <laughs> late in the game and they were, you know, quote unquote, unleashing him or whatever you want to say. Yeah. And he yeah, screwed yeah, up because yeah. he's a rookie. So the whole unleashing thing, I don't think is really a thing. I think you, you kind of are who you are. I think that he'll get better in time because they'll be a little less conservative, but I don't think there's this huge step up that like Mac Jones, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other rookies that are playing right now will take, but like with Trevor Lawrence, for example, and with Zach Wilson, if they can put the pieces together, they can take a huge step up because their ceiling is that much higher. You know, my problem with Zach going into the season is you know, the competition he played in college, his size, um, those kind of things, you know, his, his, the, the arm talents there, we've all How seen looks it. in shorts. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, some other rookies, like you said, like Josh Allen, like he, you know, he had a tough, you know, with accuracy issues going into, you know, that was a big thing. He can't throw a slant. You know, he throws low. He's inaccurate. That's obviously improved, but that's taken him three or four years. Justin Herbert's kind of a freak, and it's taken him one year. So, you know, I don't expect that kind of quick turnaround with a with a, a rookie quarterback. What I do hope to see is just better decision-making and kind of fixing stuff. Like, I don't want to see Zach Wilson all year long throw behind players. Like, yeah. throw it in front of guys and just let them make a play instead of, you know, you don't have to put all the emphasis on you. If you just throw it up to some of these guys, Corey Davis is going to catch the ball and run with it, you know. Like, like give these guys an option. I know Greg, Mim, Mims, you're, I don't you're, know. You're asking, me, you're asking me about positions and position groups. This is the issue, man. So the reason why I bring this up and why it's interesting is because, I, you know, Alex has been preaching it, honestly, since day one with this regime. And it's really what the Patriots have been doing. And it's really the juxtaposition of what the Jets have been doing. And it's being safe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Building those little throws, being conservative, and that's how you build. And maybe that'll stop us from, go, you know, coming up really short in the first quarter. You know, we can't score first half, especially, you know, it's really tough to come back from that hole when, first of all, you don't really trust your quarterback, right? He's a rookie. You don't really trust him. And then you're talking to me about, Throw, just throw it up to Corey Davis. The issue is <laughs> that all these players were, I mean, the, to be fair, their dropping woes yes. have diminished slightly, yep. but they were, they were really bad, man. You, you know, yeah. you're talking about one throw here for Mag Jones, one catch here, you know, one, not two penalties here that were whatever. Yeah. The, the, the Jets could have two different, you know, the, the whole win, win column could be flipped. Well, so uh, that's the whole, that's the whole NFL. Like a ball goes a different yeah. way. Like I, you know, that exactly. we said that Panthers game, Corey Davis, he almost broke that touchdown the first half. It's a totally different game. So exactly. that, that happens. I agree with you. What I, what I do think is uh, like, I do like, just to reiterate, I think the Patriots are being conservative with Mac Jones. I don't feel like we're being too conservative with Zach Wilson. I could be wrong in that. Maybe no, we need to be, no, we need to be conservative. That's yeah. it. Like that's honestly that's the goal going after. That's what everybody's calling for, Greg. That's why, every, including Alex. Alex yeah. is calling for that. It really worries. That kind of worries. Like a conservative of this offense, to me, sounds like Adam Gase. Like that's like third, third and third and twelve. Throw a screen yeah. and just pray to God that somehow no. you get it. You know what I mean? What? Like that's what this. That's what this sounds like. To me, that's too simple for me. Oh, yeah, just yeah. give him some dink and dunks. And I get that he should maybe sometimes look for the under receiver instead of trying to take the deep shot. I get that point. But I don't want to be more conservative. Uh, uh, the Michael Nania last week, which is a great episode, he got into a lot yeah. of details. We are predictable. That's yes. what I don't like. And yeah. I, 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 we, run, we run all the time on first down, and we run – Almost, most, almost like the top of the league in second down as well. So when you have both of those things, when you want to be conservative now, when you tell me let's be conservative and already predictable, like that just sounds like horrific offense to me. And with the with the offensive line honestly improving, like it, it, it's improving, and Beckton's coming back soon. Like don't forget that. Yeah, a couple weeks. It, 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 it's already a couple of weeks, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, 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 it should be around the corner at any time. Marcus Mays even is coming back healthy. Yeah. The only issue is Greg. The only issue, and honestly, I, I, I can't, I can't hold it any longer with this Patriots week coming in. 
CJ Mosley has a hamstring injury. Oh, I don't want to talk about CJ Mosley. I hate him too. What? I hate him. What's your issue with CJ Mosley? He's, He's been having an right. unbelievable he, year. Does he even play? Is this he year, team? he hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, I, he's good when he's on the field, but if he's but let's, let's keep time, it this year. Let's just keep it this year. Let's okay. just keep this it this year. year. Let's keep it this year. Twenty twenty one. It's a whole great. new regime. Let's not talk. The guy didn't want to play with Adam Gase. Uh, Can't you know, really you know, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. leave him alone. <laughs> I, I don't want to play with here. Adam Gase. Like, I, I, yeah, get I it. want yeah. to watch Adam Gase. It's fine. Yeah. I get it. So let's just keep it this year. He came in. He looks healthy. He's been running the defense yes, with yes. nobody. He has nobody. All his linebackers, all his friends are gone. Every single day, <laughs> his pass rushers, every single day, one of them goes down. It's a rotating and, cast. And I'm not shocked that he has a hamstring. It just bothers me that it's after the bye week. Yeah. Because, like, that's when you're supposed to be get healthy, not get injured. So, like, of course, that's um, that's just me being a dumb fan. I get that. It just, like, that. that's what um, – but, but the, I'm, I'm just upset also because it's the Patriots week, man. It's, it's Patriots week. Marcus right. May's even coming back. He even wants to play because he's 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 doing his last showdown for his contract, which we'll uh, we'll, we'll get into uh, at the end here. Well, I'll ask you about Marcus May because okay. we beat that. I mean, this fan base, us as all, we beat that conversation into the ground. But yeah, I just want to get your opinion on that and see and see what you think. But what bothers me is C.J. Mosley, man, and and they said that if he goes down, our play caller is going to be Hamza, a rookie. Crazy. And he's he's a safety that became a linebacker. And now he's going to be calling our defense against Bill Belichick. I don't care. Like, at the end of the day, like, McCorkle, I, I get it. He's McCorkle, and I could, like, downplay him and and all. And J- and James Sweetfeet is out, who usually kills us. Yep. We can't guard a tight end. And if, you, if we don't have a linebacker to call a defense or to defend the tight end, like, what are we going to do, man? Like, I, I, I'm actually really worried about our linebacker core right now. Like that's all I'm thinking about <laughs> for this week. And rightfully so, because the Patriots got two tight ends. I mean, we haven't heard a lot from Smith at all this year, but he was great in Tennessee. You know, Hunter Henry's been having a decent year so far. So, yeah, I mean, I'm with you in that. You know, the defense as a whole. One thing you said earlier that I just want to touch on real quick, because I think it's true for the offense. And I think it's true for the defense. Is I was talking about Zach Wilson not making the same mistakes over and over. Our coaching staff, when I did praise them earlier, our coaching staff needs to figure out the first quarter. We have to start faster. We have to start better on offense and on defense. So, um, you know, that's something that worries me a little bit. The defense as a whole, though, I've been pretty happy with how we've been playing. But to your point about injuries, it can only go on for so long. There's only so many backups that can actually play at the, you know, the NFL level until you start getting... These guys who are just off the street Dude. and not able to play. So uh, the one thing I the one thing I learned from being a football fan, from especially being a Jets fan, yep. once you cut the brain off of the defense. Oh yeah. Like when Jim Leonard went down, or when Bart Scott went down after that, when he started calling like when 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 David Harris goes down, when the brain of the defense, the guy calling it goes down, it's over. When Demario Davis left. Like, we were all in disarray. Yeah. And if C.J. Mosley is out this week, it's it's really it's really going to be an issue. Like, Hams is going to be calling the defense. That That's a really big problem. Uh, I Honestly, like, that's another thing with predictability, right? Because did you see that, you know, that viral video a couple, a couple weeks ago that came out uh, from C.J. Mosley? Because our defensive coordinator, Jeff Oldbridge, was talking about how it was unbelievable that C.J. Mosley made this crazy audible. Uh, at the line and saved uh, the play on third down. And, you know, they had it mic'd up. It was, you know, a whole big spectacle. It was beautiful, right? Yeah. Um, but I'm wondering if it's about to be a predictable defense. And I'm wondering what a predictable defense against Bill Belichick. If it was Tom Brady, it would be over. But if, it, if, it's, if it's McCorkle, what if it's just like Punt City, third and out City, you know, feel just like a just like a nineteen fourteen game. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be low scoring. I think it's going to be tough for these guys to move the ball, especially because the Patriots are kind of banged up in a couple spots as well. So, um, you know, it's that time of the season. You know, like you said, what worries me a little bit is about the play calling. I don't know. I was surprised with the CJ Mosley thing. Do you think we're like I saw it as just questionable? I think was it a limited practice or did he not practice? He's in practice, yeah, man. So are are you Thursday you're right you're now. worried at this point? Like officially, worried? I'm just. He's not going to play. 
It worries me because it's a hamstring. Yeah. And it can mean anything. Yeah. We don't know grade. We don't know strains. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And it came out of nowhere. It's not like we didn't see the injury. We don't know about it. And it's a soft tissue hamstring. It, he could be absolutely fine. Or he can be done. Like CMC, uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey has been coming back every single week uh, for the last six weeks <laughs> yeah. due to this hamstring. Like, who knows? Like, and the team doesn't know either. It's not like they're trying to – like, they don't even know whether they put him on IR or not, and they're losing a roster spot because of it. Now, he tried to come back. Now, they put him on IR. It, it's just like – it's just it's a little unpredictable, so. Yeah, it's one of the – in my opinion, at least, it's one of the worst injuries you can have at the NFL level just because there's so much leeway with it. There's so much unknown. You know, if you – if you tweak something, you break something, you do this, you know, dislocate a shoulder or something, you at least know what you're dealing with. With the hamstring, it could be so many different things um, to so many different people. I mean, everyone's, you know, everyone's a little Bro, different with the soft tissue stuff. Objectively, though, like, if I'm not, if I'm just a random person, right, if I'm just looking at this team, if C.J. Mosley's out, I am officially, I should be, I am worried. I should be yeah. worried. <laughs> I should, I really, honestly, like, I'm, look, I, I don't know if you could see, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt, it, it says hope in big red letters because that, that is what I'm running. On. That is running what I'm running on right now for this yeah. week. Like I'm running on hope. Like we, I, in my preseason, I have this game predicted as a win, right? Because we have to split New England, right? In my head, the way I had them losing the first one, even though it was the home opener, and like this was going to be the split. Yeah. So I'm and coming off a bye, we have extra time to prepare. We're desperate. I don't – I'm just not scared of this New England team. Their linebackers are slow. Our offensive line is good. D James White is out. I mean, it's just Damian Harris and Jacoby Myers and the tight ends. I don't know. The linebacker thing really worries me. Uh, I, I, of course, like you said, on the offensive side, I hope that we can get together the first quarter, maybe score. Yes, score in the first quarter. That'd be great. Something. If you, I'll take a Get a lead. Ball. Get a lead in the first half. I mean, we're asking for crazy stuff, but yeah. all, all, I, all I ask is for the refs not to, you know, blow blow the call dead if, if we get a fumble on the Patriots. Can we just have one Please. Patriots game that's normal. At least just don't do one it like in Patri the first quarter. <laughs> like the first drive. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's but, really tough. Yeah. So, I mean, this going into this week, like I said, you know, they, they played a tough game last week against Dallas, and I think Dallas has a better offense than we do for sure. Um, defensively, I think, you know, we talked on winning picks weekly a little bit about, uh, you know, does Dallas have a good defense and then kind of our back and forth in that, you know, I think Dallas and us kind of fall in the same spot in the league on defense. The <laughs> I mean, please don't compare us with the, with the team that's about to win the division, a team that's six and one against the spread. Well, we don't need or that five against the spread. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're just unbelievable. Yeah. You know, but, but speaking of Mr. Winning picks weekly. Yeah, I mean, Mister, v you're not just a video producer, man. You hear, you hear, you hear, promote the pod. Got Jets plus seven. The over under is forty two and a half. It, it it opened at seven, so that didn't move, and the over under opened at forty three and a half, moved down a point. What's do you have the the public betting on it? Who's betting what? Everybody's on the Pats money and the spread, buddy. Give me the Jets. All day, Jets plus seven. Who's the crazy one now, huh? Jets plus seven. Vegas has to have a good week this week. Vegas is gonna kill the public this week. If the public's heavy on anything, take 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 the other team. Okay, so you're you don't care about the actual game. You don't care about CJ Mosley. Nope. No gambling. Okay, gambling, just, just... gambling is for me at least is completely different than actually like rooting for the team getting the game. So yeah, okay. I like Jets in the seven. I, I do. I said earlier, I think it's going to be low scoring. I think there's a chance it's a close game. You know, I don't see the Patriots' offense lighting anyone up, especially our defense, like I said, has looked pretty decent at, at spots. Um, they're banged up a little bit. James White's out. I think they got a couple offensive linemen there nursing some injuries. So, I you know, I think there's an opportunity C. for us. C.J. Mosley. If he doesn't play, it's huge. But still, I think I think there's a shot that we keep this one close. Um, my biggest thing with oh, watching the game is just the offense, man. Our, our offense, we have to score. We okay. have to score field goals. We have to we have to get drives together. We can't do three and outs. We have to get something. Who, who on the op, who on the offense are you are you looking at? We'll get you. At, we'll we'll end this uh, podcast on that. Who 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 should the, who should the fans uh, keep an eye out on the Jets' offense? 
I don't know. I actually want to know your opinion on this. Who's our best running back? Michael Carter, easy. Really? Better than Johnson? Easy. Yep, easy. My, t- Johnson uh, is it could be our you know goal line guy, but it's predictable. That's the problem. When he comes in, everybody knows we're gonna go in between the ta- you know in between okay. the guards and try to get you know a yard or two. So it's 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 really annoying. You know what I mean? Okay. And I don't. I I think that Carter could actually do that, but he's a little he's a little small, so he could get injured. Right, but yeah. I, I I think he sees the holes, and he gets there. Okay. And he could also move quick. And if he doesn't fumble, I think he's honestly our best player. The only problem is the blocking, man. Yeah. the The blocking has been an issue for us. The tight ends blocking and the running back blocking has really been an issue. He he stepped it up last week, and honestly, so did Ty Johnson. So that's really what it comes down to. But just as a strict like running back, Michael Carter is. I think better than them, but also like, I don't know, man. Am I sing? Are we singing a different tune if Zach Wilson doesn't throw off the lineman's head? You know, in, <laughs> yeah. in, in London, and Tevin Coleman gets that ball, he walks in for a touchdown. We're winning that game. Tevin Coleman gets a touchdown. We're now we're just running the ball at the end of the game. Everything's yep. different. Yeah, I mean, it is those. It, you know, it is NFL the way the balls bounce. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes they're not going your way. Sometimes they are. Uh, on offense, though, besides the running backs, I'm looking at Mims, man. I'm hoping he gets in there. I'm hoping he gets some plays. You know, we brought in a lot of wide receivers this year, but we drafted him. Was it two years ago? He's yeah, a second round pick, man. Be careful. He, 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 <laughs> he's he, got, he's got, he's got the stamp on him. <laughs> he's got to get going. I mean, we got to get going on offense. We got to take some shots. I'm just looking for Zach Wilson to be accurate. That's all I care about. Get it out on time. Don't hold the ball. Don't like I don't know what he was doing one play I don't remember what it was I think where he was running against Atlanta just took a shot like dude just get down just calm yes. down also he he's he, he's uh I think like top three in the league right now in uh, holding the ball yeah just get it out Before, all the time yeah he's got to get the ball out You're talking and- about being conservative I think they almost need to I don't know if this is like another way of being conservative but just simplify the reads a little bit. Don't give them four or five reads. Give them three reads, get rid of the ball. Three reads, get rid of the ball. Just move, get a little up tempo going. Let's let's get this going. Yeah. 3 yards, 4 yards. You know, we don't need anything crazy. Let him feel comfortable. It's a whole different game when you when he feels relaxed and he doesn't feel like he's running for his life every play. Listen, man, this is just what I'm worried about, okay? And it, it, it's really a mental game now because the, the the Jets media and the Jets fans are at Michael Floor, our offensive coordinator, to and and so have to change something, change something, do something different. Yeah. And and now I'm worried they might overcorrect. You know what I mean? And from being predictable to just being nuts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They're doing just like wacky stuff. So I don't. I just don't want to see wacky Jet stuff. You know what I mean? Versus the Patriots, I just kick field goals. Punts. Morstead's been fantastic. Yeah, he has. I, 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 just be fun. Just be fundamentally sound. I'm okay with three and outs, and I say that now. But really, in the first half, I really, we, I really need urgency. I really need yes. them to play the the first quarter. First quarter, yeah. Like it's the fourth quarter. Yeah. Like actually, no, like, like, I, like pretend like you're losing the game. Like I said, get a just little try it out. Going. Just try it out. Just like actually believe like you're down in the game and it's not willy nilly. And if they come out like that, I, I think we'll be okay. You know what I mean? Like we can't just like run the ball and be conservative because it's zero zero. No, like we're losing and we have to like get it moving because that has to be your urgency in the first quarter. You have to change it. Yeah, what worries me too is about just being, like you said, predictable, running the ball on first down. A lot of analytics guys are out there that work for like the NFL and work in these different positions. And they talk about teams that just run the ball on first down, or just the NFL is moving away from that. You have to be able to throw. You have to be able to throw on time. And you it's have just to a threat. It. It's just yeah. a threat, man. Once the threat, like for example, holding the ball for too long isn't that bad because when you look at that list, Lamar Jackson's right there. Yeah. But the problem is nobody knows whether he's going to run or throw, yeah. and that hesitation changes everything up. If he had wide receivers that can catch on a consistent basis, I mean, you see what happens when Mark Andrews gets it going, or even when you know Hilo Brown gets it going. But we don't have to talk about them right now. Yep. Just give me a, give me a final score on this on this game, and tell me if Elijah Moore is finally going to get it going. 
I mean, I don't think so. I'm, I, I'm happy we didn't really talk about him too much. I know. Um, I know. You know, or uh, another second round pick. You think he's gonna go down the hole? He's just too small, man. Uh, you know, I've said it from the beginning that I don't like, I don't like these short, tiny receivers. If you're drafting a receiver, you it's have a new, to go. it's a new trend. It's a new trend. The 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 Chiefs would be literally the worst team in the league without Tyreek Hill. He's small. He's one in a million. He's so much okay. faster than everyone. It's not even the same. He's Patrick Mahomes. I mean, if you put Elijah, Elijah Moore, Moore the led Chiefs, college, Elijah Moore led college football in yards. Hey, who's that old miss with AJ Brown and DK Metcalf? I would lead, I, I would have a shot at leading the league in yards if those two were ta- or getting covered by five DBs every play too. I mean, come on. So you know, I, 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 I agree. You know, he put up college numbers again, but system NFL is a whole different breed. It's gonna take him time if he gets it together. I'll be so happy because we're gonna need someone to replace the Crowder role that we had going last year that was looking good. Um. But to me, you know, I don't think Give he me needs a final score. Final score. It hurts. Uh, Jets 17, Patriots 21. It's close. Oh, that's a clean score. A little lower scoring than I think people think. It uh, hits the under. Jets cover. But I do think that uh, it's going to be low scoring, man. And it sucks because we need to get something going on offense. I just don't think this is the week. I think it's going to take a little time still, even though we had a whole bye week to prep. We like you said, we need to play with urgency, and I just, I haven't seen it in the first third of the season or whatever it's been. What do you think? Yeah. Though, what do you got for a final score? I think it's gonna be a gross game. Well, yeah. I, I I think like nineteen to like fourteen. Okay. But so I will never a pick. Score got me there for a second. Start so starting out with I'll, nineteen. I'll never pick. New England to Boston to win anything. So I'm going to pick the Jets 19 14. I mean, yeah, I'm a little thick for that. But again, I'm run- this one is running on full hope. This is a, this is a, a, a gas tank full of hope. And I have to run with it because our, our, our schedule gets kind of. Hey, I don't want to say anything yet, but hey, there's soft. some games it's coming soft. up. It's, it, it's, it's, it's soft. I'm just going to say yeah. it's squishy soft. This is a little squishy. One last, <laughs> one last point. You talked about last week, the AFC. Titans beat the Bills last week. We beat the Titans. Are we better than the Buffalo Bills right now? No, but all it does mean is I'm a genius because I okay. hit the Jets and I hit the Titans. So go to Winning Picks Weekly. Yes. Subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up. And while you're there, subscribe and like Nick Jets, etc. It's all under actually the same parent company under YouTube. Yes. And then... I mean, come on, guys. Go to Apple. Go to Spotify. You know what to do. You we, you, you get you get it every week. Just help us out. Just hit that five-star review for us. We see that you're listening. Just hit the five-star review for us. It actually makes a difference. We'll read it out loud if you say something. Well, just hit the subscribe. I mean, we know Give you're here. Comment. Just, just, Let us know just, just do it. It takes like literally it. five seconds. Just please just do it. it. It's on Apple, Spotify, Google, anything. Amazon Alexa. I always love that one. You can listen to us there. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, you have it, you name it. You know, it's it, if you don't have it, it's okay. <laughs> Alex. Yep. Shout out but to yeah, Alex hit us up. Again. Love him. Shout out to Alex for his wedding. Hit you could you could definitely see him on the post game for Knicks Fan TV. Yes. Um him, you can see us myself at the Jet Press. And again, winning picks weekly, baby. Can we get a win for the love of God? Please, Jets, get a win. Please. Please, Greg. Please, Je- Alex. Please, Ricey. Let's, Let's go, go Jets. Jets.